And you're saying that now the entire facility is being run by Ghanaians. Absolutely. And we're very proud of that. If you look around His Excellency, you see that both men and women here, they yeah, run the much. plant. So when Ghana first discovered oil and gas of its shores, the big question was, how can we use this wave to benefit the people? That's where Ghana Gas comes in. This was founded in the year 2011. Ghana Gas had one clear goal, to take Ghana's natural gas resources and turn them into something transformative, power for industries, energy for homes, and opportunities for communities. Fast forward to today, and Ghana Gas isn't just meeting expectations, in fact, it is exceeding them. This is a company that has proven how local experts and bold decisions can reshape an economy. Let's take you back to the year 2017. That's when everything changed. Ghana engineers and technicians took over the operations of the Etuabo gas processing plant from Sinopec, the Chinese contractor that built this facility. Now, this wasn't just about taking over, in fact, it was about stepping up. What the results today? Ghana Gas has saved the country over $250 million in operation cost alone. Yes, you heard it right. That's about $3 million every single month. But here is the thing. It's not just about saving money. In fact, this move proves something bigger. It shows that Ghanaians have the skills, the knowledge, and the drive to manage and operate world-class infrastructure. Since 2017, these local experts have successfully carried out three major maintenance shutdowns without needing outside help. They have also implemented top-notch safety standards, earning them the prestigious ISO 45001 certification. And here is the kicker, there hasn't been a single lost time injury and that is a safety record to be proud of. Dr. Ben K.D. Asante, the CEO of Ghana Gas, put it perfectly. Just hang on with me, but this is a very important slide. It just tells you how gas is distributed in the country. And first, the green tells you where the gas sources are coming from. You see at the bottom left corner, that is the Jubilee and 10 fields with those green. About 100 million standard cubic feet of gas is coming from those fields. Those gases are actually raw. They are raw because they contain some heavy hydrocarbons. Those have to be removed. That's why we do the processing. So it's only the Jubilee and 10 gas that goes through processing. And you see the Atuabo gas processing plant there. Once it is processed, that lean gas, gas that has been stripped of its liquids, we call lean gas, just like you call lean meat, meat that has got, you know, fat on it. Once you actually extract the oil from it, we call it lean meat. And then that lean gas is commingled with a gas which is already dry, coming from the Sankofa fields. Then it goes um, eastward towards Takrade for power generation, and some also goes to um, Tema. But we also have a lateral that takes part of the gas. And you see that there's a lateral that is taking some of the gas through Pristia, and then currently also Kumasi. Kumasi is certainly having generation as well. Okay, so the green tells you the sources of gas, whilst the blue points tells you where the gas is consumed. Okay, and then, of course, the infrastructure there tells you how the gas is handled, the processing and the transportation. The processing is on the left side, which is the gas processing, and the transmission facilities are those in, in black. The dotted ones are those that are yet to be installed. But this really it captures the distribution network or system for Ghana's um, gas, both domestic and then you see Red one also coming from Nigeria. About 60 million standard cubic meter gas also coming from Nigeria. This is a picture of the gas, Ghana's gas distribution. This one. What has happened so far? Okay. So um, I think Ghana Gas, as the minister said, um, had its infrastructure actually installed by November 2024. November 2024, we had the sighting of the first gas into Ghana, first domestic gas coming into Ghana. And then we took about six months, five months to do commissioning of the infrastructure. 
So the first commercial um, activity in Ghana actually started in May of 2015. And that is where we're actually selling gas to the power producers. Before then, before then, we were actually relying on just, you know, some small amount of gas coming from Nigeria, and then mostly also liquid fuel, mostly light crude oil, and to some extent, some diesel. That infrastructure so installed had only a capacity of about 135 units of gas. In other words, at that point, when the infrastructure, the pipeline between Atuabo and Takrade was laid, it could only handle 135 units of gas to Takrade. With the installation of the Anoche compressor, that capacity was boosted to 405, almost three times. So this was a significant infrastructure that was actually added, I believe, in 2020 to enhance the capacity of the distribution or transmission system, gas transmission system. Very critical infrastructure, tripling the capacity of the gas distribution system. Then you've heard about a car power ship pipeline as well. Car power ship was moved from Tema close to the Takrade enclave. 450 megawatts of it. It was relying on HFO, which is heavy fuel oil. But with this proximity to the gas infrastructure, we are now able to use gas through the secondary regulating and metering facility. 450 megawatts is close about 20% of the total thermal capacity in the country. Also very significant infrastructure that started in 2019. This is a good picture. I like this one because it tells you really what Ghana gas does, even if you've not been there. But I would encourage you to visit our plant. So for the processing of the Jubilee and 10 gas, you see, when you take about 100 units of gas, about 94% of it goes for power generation and small um, non-power applications as well. 6% of it is used for liquid generation. And liquids, we call it natural gas liquids, and these are the LPGs and the condensates and the pentanes. LPGs, you know what it's used for, for domestic heating. And the condensate also, together with RON 95, is used to produce premix fuel for outboard motors for our coastal folks. Also a very significant product as well. And Ghana Gas, actually, in terms of the LPG, we currently provide about 50% of the LPG coming into the country. The rest certainly is imported. But for the gas, we handle about 85% of the gas that is used for thermal generation. So you see that we are a pretty important outfit when it comes to uh, power generation, and even, and even for non-power applications as well. But we do operations, um, maintenance, and certainly expansion on as needed basis. Okay. Now, what is the economic impact of our operation? Very clear. Enhance energy diversity, or we increase our power portfolio. Um, and so instead of just relying on, on uh, um, hydro, we now certainly do have gas. And gas has really replaced liquid fuel. And that is quite significant. Now, cost savings for the fuel substitution. So substituting gas for liquid fuel has significant implications, cost implications. If you take the Tema Enclave, for instance, if you're generating about 100 megawatts of power, if you use liquid fuel, your bill will be close to about $70 million a month. When you use gas, it's about $33 million. So it's, it's less than even half when you use gas instead of liquid fuel. But it doesn't end there. When you use gas, because of its low calorific density as well, you don't have a high atmospheric emission of CO2. Now, globally, we are all transitioning into renewables. We are all trying to minimize the amount of CO2 that we emit into the atmosphere 
because of the greenhouse impact it has. When you use gas instead of oil, you cut that down by almost half. So there's, it's, it's, it's not just the cost savings, but also the atmospheric responsiveness when you use gas instead of liquid fuel. Job creation, significant. And also it helps certainly, as I mentioned, with the industrialization effort that we have. We've um, listed some of the uh, clients that we have for non-power application of gas. Let's go on. So that's the first gate. Summarize it. Power generation, LPG, production, condensate for premix. That is significant. And then we've got the infrastructure that enables all this to be able to transport the gas from the source to the market. Whether it's processing or transportation infrastructure. That's what Ghana Gas does. But we don't just do that. There's also community development, what we call corporate social responsibility. Certainly we want to be good corporate citizens as well. And we do mostly the health facilities, educational facilities as well. We also help with water and sanitation. We've got um, sports and um, skills training as, as well as uh, livelihood um, empowerment and progress as well. If you look at what we've done, we've, we don't just concentrate on where our facilities are, which will be the Western region. Ghana Gas's CSR project covers all 16 regions. And certainly, as I mentioned earlier, it's a way of giving back to the communities. The projects cover health, as I mentioned, uh, education, water and sanitation, roads, and all those. To date, 2024, we have completed 400, over 400 projects, exactly about 404 projects. And over 80 projects, about 88 projects are still ongoing, quite significant, to the tune of close about half a billion cities in terms of. So we take that seriously, our corporate social responsibility. That's number two. The last poll that we want to look at is the human resource development, or what we call human capacity development. For those of you who know Ghana Gas story, Ghana Gas infrastructure, certainly uh, with the help of the Chinese, was installed in 2014, as I mentioned. And then it was being operated by the Chinese, all of them. I think that the biggest issue I had was most of the operating models were in Chinese. Um, so it was very difficult for our young engineers, young men and women, engineers and technicians to actually follow along. So we took that bold step, said no, we want to take our own young engineers, men and women and train them to operate our infrastructure, to man the control rooms, to go to the processing floors, to be at the storage facilities and handle all those. The utilities, every one of them should be a local, should be a Ghanaian. So that's what we did in um, April of 2017. Seven years and counting. And they have not, and, and certainly cost savings are there. We were saving about $3 million every month because we were paying the Chinese quite a bit of money. With the Chinese gone, you know, that burden we can, we can actually shelf because we were paying our people anyways. So it was $250 million US dollars saved to date. Okay, and certainly also create about a thousand permanent and contractual and, and contract um, um, employment. Um, but I think for me, what it's, it's even uh, more significant is the fact that we are able to actually increase the intellectual capacity in an industry as sophisticated as the gas industry. If you go around the world, people who work in the gas industry are. are you know, quite knowledgeable. And um, because gas, handling gas is certainly more difficult than handling oil. Oil is more quiescent, just lies there till you bring an ignition source to it. Gas actually is more volatile. So those who work in the gas industry, and I say this, um, you know, to, to 
the Ghana Gas employees who are listening here and also at the site, that's kudos to you for handling this, certainly um, with no lost time to injury. Kudos to you and congratulations. So this is what indigenization is about. You go to the site, uh, you go to the site and you see just all Ghanaians handling all the sophisticated facilities. And, and that gives me a lot of pleasure. Okay. So I want to say that using indigenous Ghanaian engineers and technicians who took over from um, the Chinese in 2017 has been a very significant milestone in the operating life of Ghana gas, and certainly I would say Ghana. To put it in context, look at our brothers in Trinidad. It took them 60 years, 60, 60 to fully indigenize. Took our brothers next door in the east side, Nigeria, 50 years to actually have Nigerians just operating their infrastructure. But for Ghana gas and for Ghana, for our gas infrastructure, it took less than three years. It's not juju, I think. I'll say this to the lawyer, the Ghana gas staff. 